Why? Oh, no reason. Except you gave me the ugly! You know, when they say survival of the fittest, it's more like survival of, if it works, it works. Cause they didn't mean fit as in abs, arms, and selling supplements on Instagram. No, they mean fit as in like, how good are you at staying alive long enough to make more of yourself? For example, you won't see a turtle with a Gymshark sponsorship. Yet a mobile boulder has been running the same playbook for a good 200 million years. And it's on islands where evolution really goes off one. You see, the thing is, because islands have more of a cap on how many people can be alive at once, islands have more specialist species than generalists. It's kind of like the job market, the more competitive it gets, the more DMs you get from people pushing Forex or overpriced under quality knives. So it makes sense for the oldest island in the world to have the most creatively questionable creatures on its roster. India divorced itself from the continent of Africa an estimated 150 million years ago, and then proceeded to lose custody of its love child about 60 million years after that, and Madagascar has been on its own ever since. Meaning its residents have had nearly 90 million laps around the sun of character development to figure life out. Which is how we ended up with the ugliest monkey in the world. Matter of fact, the first time scientists saw it, they legitimately thought it was a squirrel nature tried redrawing strictly from memory. It wasn't until about 100 years later that scientists realized that the I.I. is actually a primate, meaning this dehydrated gremlin is closer to you than to any squirrel. Although it's not a monkey, like I said, it's actually a lemur. Although I don't blame them for taking one look at it and being confused. The I.I. is built like an identity crisis. It has the body of a monkey, the ears of a bat, the bushy tail of a fox, the dental plant of a rodent, and hands that would have gotten it burnt at a stake in Salem. Even its name is more complicated than it needs to be. Most people say that the I.I.'s government came from the Malagasy phrase, I don't know. As in they were so disgusted by a fetal golem that they didn't even want to utter its name. Imagine being so aesthetically upsetting that the people naming you decide you're not even worth an identity. Like, like the name on your wiki is pretty much, I don't know. The ugly stepchild of Madagascar only really makes sense once you see what it does for a living. Form is function, and the I.I. looks like animal casserole because they're specialists on steroids. Their favorite foods are the grubs that Lion King did a really good job of making actually look good. They use those huge bat ears to listen as they drum on pieces of wood. And once they hear a hollow spot, they use that beaver type overbite to drill through the wood. All while using that tail for balance as they do this in complete darkness. Which they have to since the I.I. is the world's largest nocturnal primate. Which is a title that really means next to nothing since they're still small enough to have to only be active when the sun goes down and so do their chances of being put out of commission by birds or prey or the biggest op to lemur life. The but being the largest means they're not the only nocturnal primates out there and arguably, not even the ugliest. Cause the Tarsier legitimately looks like it's having an internal mental health crisis. But like with the I don't know, form means function. And this perked out primate having the biggest eyes relative to the body size of any animal means they can take in as much light as possible. This means this pocket sized primate can hunt in total darkness while also avoiding being snatched up and turned into calories themselves. Even though they look fundamentally disturbed by their own existence. Maybe that's why they pull their own plugs in captivity. I.I.'s don't have to factory reset themselves because there's plenty of people that'll do it for free. That's because I didn't mention the weirdest thing about them. I.I.'s have six fingers and one of them's three times longer than all the others. And it also happens to be their middle finger. So when this gremlin goes for groceries, it taps on trees like a Jehovah's Witness going door to door. And it's after using those never not growing teeth to invite themselves in that they use that demonic digit to scoop the grubs out. And if you've ever held an I.I.'s middle finger, you've both lived my dream and probably thought it was broken. When in fact, that finger has a ball and socket joint that essentially gives it 360 movement. Basically, the way you can move your wrist and your hand is the way this rehab chipmunk moves its finger. That finger is great for grabbing grubs, but also for another favorite pastime of theirs. That pastime being mucophagy, meaning eye eyes might not choose their nose, but they sure as hell pick them. And that finger is long enough to pass through the nostrils and reach all the way down its throat. And despite the gag this video gave me that I'm gonna have to edit out, it's not painful for the eye eye, just to anyone watching. We don't really know exactly why they do this. Some scientific evidence suggests that eating it helps boost our immune system, but honestly, my search history is cursed enough. I'm really not trying to go down that rabbit hole. But you see, this is the kind of stuff only millions of years of character development in an isolated area can lead to. I mean, that's exactly how we got the ugliest frog in the world. And I know beauty's subjective, but I defy you to try and defend that. This frog has a name that sounds like I'm trying to test guidelines and it's found only one place in the world. In the South American Lake Titicaca, which it's named after. And it's because of where it lives that this frog looks like if Kermit ever snapped and went full Buffalo Bill. Lake, I'm not gonna say it again, is the world's highest elevated lake at 12,500 feet, where there can be only a third of the oxygen you'd expect at sea level. So because frogs can breathe through their skin, the frog's extra post-liposuction looking skin means extra surface area to absorb oxygen. Which is what makes it the ultimate specialist, since the skin that lets it live up here would almost certainly get it packed up and put on a shirt anywhere else. Which is also why if you google scrotum frog, two things will happen. 
You'll get this struggle toads mugshot and you'll end up on the same watch list as me. Unfortunately, despite looking like a grown man's hairless undercarriage, the frog with the name often gets deprived from life by people using it for food and medicine. I eyes also have to worry about getting turned into past tense by people, but for almost the opposite reason. You see, I was kidding with the whole gremlin thing. I, I actually think they're kind of cute. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and according to locals, I eyes don't behold in nothing. Despite being a lemur that literally identifies as a woodpecker, locals were so terrified of it that they would murk it on sight. And here's where their biggest flex becomes a curse. Because according to folktales, not only was this primate a harbinger of evil, if it ever pointed that freakish middle finger at you, you might as well lease a casket since it meant you'd be a was sooner than later. One myth even said that if you didn't go out of your way to sign its obituary first, the I.I. would break into your house and relieve you from life by stabbing you through the heart in your sleep. Obviously, it's not even close to being true, but imagine being such an assault on the eyes that people decide that oxygen is wasted on you. It's the opposite of pretty privilege. It's like a disheveled disadvantage. And this homely handicap is a big reason why the I.I. is endangered. But another big reason is due to habitat loss. Because despite being in the same weight class as like a laptop, I.I.s are solitary and require all the space that comes with it. And while males can tolerate territory over overlap, females ain't having none of that. Especially since I.I.s, like most lemurs, are female dominated. That includes ringtails, by the way, so King Julian, you know what, I'm gonna leave it at that. And because we're really not that much different, males will run the most outrageous of fades for females, even resorting to levels of erection deflection by pulling males off females while they're actively mating. Which is probably why male I.I.s will often lock into their females in the process and they can stay stuck that way for up to an hour. This ensures that the male swimmers make it to the pool party no matter how much the competition tries to run interference. Because ultimately, like I said, eye eyes aren't that much different from us. They have two eyes, a mouth, a desire to breed, and a pair of nipples just like we all do. Except you might not notice them because eye eye nipples aren't in the neighborhood of where you'd expect them to be since eye eye nipples are closer to the groin than they are to the chest. Because that honestly makes no less sense than anything else about a booger eating, swiss army finger wielding pro simian with a child lock for its junk. Well, not an actual child lock. That. That'd be weird. But as far as weird goes, it might not even be the ugliest primate on the planet. I say that because the Ugly Animal Preservation Society, yes, that's a real thing, had a vote on the most aesthetically displeasing animal out there, and the I.I. didn't even make the top five. You wanna know who did? Yeah, this guy right here. The mascot of if it works, then f it, it works. Cause scientists believe that a nose big enough for its own license plate and parking space is actually used to help catch a female's attention. As in one female decided she liked the way big nose is hanging, now this monkey's entire personality is a facial flesh sack that I'm probably gonna have to censor. That might be the weirdest thing about them, but it's not the only. Cause Schnoz monkey also uses raging erections as a sign of aggression and a threat. And if you don't believe me, pause this video and Google it. Oh wait, you probably won't see them in zoos and the internet says it's because their specialized diet is too difficult to replicate. But I really think it's because no zoo wants to end up with a lawsuit because a proboscis monkey felt insecure and decided to mentally scar a child. You probably won't see one of these either, but for different reasons. The snub-nosed monkey is like the shadow clone of the proboscis. Instead of a massive flex on its face, it instead looks like it could unlock Voldemort's phone. These monkeys, especially the golden snub nose, have to live in the cold mountainous forests of Asia and it's believed that the snub nose helps prevent it from getting frostbite. And yeah, in typical evolution fashion, the monkeys with a no nose got to live long enough to pass it down and the ones that didn't, well, you don't see them around for a reason. And like I said, in some cases, we're really no better than them, since black snub nose monkeys will actually use natural lipstick as a way to get attention. Except with them, it's actually the guys whose lips get the Kylie Jenner treatment, and the males with the biggest and brightest lips get the best pick of partners. Red lips are one thing, but one monkey managed to take it even further. For so long, we didn't know why the Wakari cosplays as Red Skull with a receding hairline. Turns out, just like with the snub nose's lips and this monkey's proboscis, it's what beauty standards in nature look like. Scientists now believe that the bright red color correlates to health and reproductive fitness. We know this because when a Wakari gets sick with like a malaria parasite or something, its face will get so pale it'll almost be white. So the redder in the face this crimson chimp is, the healthier he looks and the more females he gets to poke. But the thing with specialist species is, they usually only live in one place and they're usually also endangered. The I.I. is no exception, in fact at one point we thought they straight up got discontinued back in the 1930s until we accidentally rediscovered them over 20 years later. And today there's believed to be anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 of them in stock. Which isn't great, but they're still doing better than the ugliest animal in the world. Cause you remember how I said Nosby over here was voted in the top five? Well, you wanna know who was number one? It was actually the blobfish. The fish that looks like a deflated whale fetus auditioned as a pinata. But honestly, I don't think there's an animal we did dirtier than the blobfish. The streets probably didn't tell you, but this is what they're supposed to look like. It's just that their address happens to be in the bottom of the ocean. So to survive pressure that would turn any one of us into a chalk outline, the blobfish has few muscles, even fewer bones, and no swim bladder. They're basically just a pile of waterproof 
gelatin with eyes. And uh, you remember the whole formless function thing? Well, if the blobfish looked more like a regular fish, it would instantly flatline and have its insides forced out of its mouth. The problem is, when blobfish get caught in trawling nets and get pulled up, the same body that spent millions of years evolving to live in the crotch of the ocean basically falls apart in itself on land. So, uh, yeah, we basically memed the soul the fishing corpse and called it ugly. And in their defense, if the most attractive person you know got airdropped into the blobfish's neighborhood, no amount of personality would save their face from what the water pressure would do to it. We don't know how many blobfish are left in the world, but consensus says it's something like 400. So yeah, the blobfish definitely got screwed with the whole ugliest animal title. That dishonor definitely should have gone to this thing. It's a Damascus goat, and like the blobfish, evolution didn't hoe this animal. We did. Thanks to selective breeding, we created a goat that looks almost cute as a baby, but then grows up into the steed of Satan. So basically, we pugged a goat, but these goats are incredibly valued for their milk and meat, and getting a purebred one will set you back a good $5,000 or more. Not only that, but this one was named the most beautiful goat in the world in 2008. So I guess the moral here is, no matter how rough you might think you look, you're always going to be of value to somebody. Even if you look like you took a steel chair to the chin. And even if you look like something God made on a deadline. But that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram for more consistent content while you're waiting for the next video. And if you'd like to support this incredibly questionable content beyond just subscribing, my Patreon Patreon's also going to be in the description. But as always, never feel like you have to give anything. That aside, make sure you drink water, hug your mother, be glad your lady poker doesn't have a child lock on it, and I'll see y'all in the next one.